Hello again gamers, welcome back to the Board Game Captain. I'm the Board Game Captain, and today I'm going to be reviewing and talking about the new starter box set for Tales from the Loop. Before we get started though, uh, if you would like to support the channel and you're in a position to do so, and you would like to get access to early videos, access to exclusive giveaways, and maybe even the ability to uh, request me to do reviews of specific classic games, you can join my Patreon. There's a link in the description down below. And if you'd like to buy some of our cool gamer gear merchandise, uh, like the shirt I'm wearing right now, which says, I drink and I game, it's what I do, and it has a mug of beer and a D20 on it, Shirts like this, as well as mugs in lots of different colors, are available over on our Teespring store. Also, a link in the description down below and another link at the end of the video. Okay, so I want to start off my review by thanking Free League Publishing for sending me this copy of the Tales from the Loop starter set. So, uh, the Tales from the Loop game, I want to start by saying... Uh, is using a variation on the Year Zero game engine, which was created by Thomas Harenstam. Uh, now, the creator of the Loop universe, though, is Simon Stalinhag, and the lead game designer is Nils Hintz, uh, and Thomas Harenstam is also the editor and project manager, and then there is additional writing by Matt Forbeck and Nils Carlin. So, there were... Uh, small enough number of people that I can mention everybody and I'll show you the page there now I've got this is the basic rules already pulled out from here but um, I'm gonna open it all up in a minute and show you what comes in the box now the box notes that this is a game for two to six players for ages 14 and up and for 120 minutes so this is the kind of stuff we usually see on board games but this is in fact a role-playing game so I'm gonna start with that now the two to six players um, yes it is true, though I usually think three should really be more like the minimum. Um, Two-player games where you have one player being the game master and the other being a player character uh, can be a little too restrictive in the, in the variety of what goes on. It's better to have discussion amongst multiple player characters, I find. So I usually like a, a minimum of two player characters. Your mileage may vary. I do know some people like to do solo adventures. Now... Ages 14 and up, I think this is a bit of an overestimate. Actually, I think uh, the version of the Year Zero system in Tales from the Loop, which I'm going to talk more in more detail about later in this review, is light enough that I think you could bring that down a few years, even in, down to maybe 10, maybe 10 and up. And at 120 minutes, I mean, there really should be a range in there. Uh, this is a role-playing game. There's a single game in here, I think, Think would take long it would probably take longer than that to play through the the single adventure that is in here and of course you can make your own adventures so for your own adventures they could be any length you want but for the one adventure that's in here I think they should have based it more on that and based on that it's probably more like around the the four to six hour mark maybe around four to five ish depending on how you play it. And, and it, um, you know, a lot of that is always dependent on how your players play it. So let's have a look at everything that comes in the box. So first thing in the box here, we've got some custom dice. So the custom dice here are this nice like burnt orange or maybe even rust color, which is really cool because a lot of the stuff in the game has, you know, orange as like a theme. You've got orange on the box. You've got the rule books are orange. There's lots of orange in the books. Um, and the one, there's one, two, three, four, and five, all each with a loop around them. And then six is the symbol of the loop, which is this crown with a loop around it. And it still has a little six in the corner. These are really great. Um, the crown sticks out very easily and it is the most important side that you need when you're rolling. So that's really good. And we come, the game comes with four, eight, ten custom dice. Now, the, these are really nice to have. You could use regular dice just fine. You don't necessarily need the dice. But when you have a game where a specific side of the die is really important, I like when they do custom dice. And I like when they do a box set to include custom dice. So for that, I thoroughly appreciate these custom dice. And I think they're quite nice. So there we go. I'm going to put them to the side for now. Uh, I'm going to grab the rest of the stuff from the box here and show you what else we have. So we've got... 
the rules, which comes in kind of like a, a, a dossier, sort of. And you've got the, the loop symbol on it. It's fairly plain. It's got that orange kind of cover. Soft cover, um, staple binding. It says, rules, read this first. And what do you get in the rules? So the rules, which again, lots of orange in here. Uh, you've got lots of nice full color pictures. You have an explanation of the world. This is an alternate world 1980s where you could either be playing the game in northern Sweden or over in uh, Nevada near Lake Mead. Uh, both places in the real world have particle accelerators and that's kind of the, the basis of this where the advancements that came out of the particle accelerators in this alternate world wound up creating far more advanced technologies than we actually have in our world, including robots and AI and um, uh, anti-gravity drives and things like that. So the first section you have in the book is Welcome to the Loop. So in Welcome to the Loop, it explains a little bit about um, how this is a role-playing game and how the, the each adventure is meant to be played out kind of like a mystery. It goes to a, a very good explanation of how role-playing works. And right in here, they have a note about the core rulebook. And this is a, a really good note. It's very important because it helps you to understand where this box set ends and where the core rulebook begins. You know, uh, what you're going to use this for, how long you're going to use it, and when you're going to want to get the core rulebook. So it says... This box set is designed as an, introduct an introduction to Tales from the Loop. After play, having played The Recycled Boy, which is the one uh, adventure that comes in this box, we recommend you check out the full rulebook. The core rulebook contains comprehensive rules for creating your own kids to play, guidelines for creating new mysteries, and no less than four complete mysteries to play. Beyond the core rulebook, there are several more modules for this game with even more mysteries and other tools. So a couple of the big things that are not in here that you will need the core rulebook for is one, if you're playing a campaign, um, designing your own characters, because this just comes with a bunch of pre-gens, but not the rules for making your own characters, and two, leveling up. There's no ability to actually level up in here. So uh, it c covers some basic ideas of what the world is like, gives you lots of bits of artwork, which help you to to understand what that's like then we go into the age of the loop where we start talking about this alternate world 1980s with these strange high-tech devices which is really cool um one of the things i really like about this section is there's a bunch of little bits of scrap paper uh pick pictures of scrap paper basically as little boxes that give you things to um to know about the world like there's one for 10 movies, and it's got 10 80s movies that help to put you in the right mindset of the 80s, and they're all like great classic movies. So it's Ghostbusters, Top Gun, Return of the Jedi, The Goonies, E.T., The Breakfast Club, Back to the Future, Stand By Me, Gremlins and Karate Kid, and it lists the year for all of them. The, the latest one of these is 86, which is Stand By Me. Then, uh, as uh, as it goes on, they talk about, you know, the kind of stuff that was, was prevalent. So, like, Commodore 64 computers. Then there's a section here. I love they have a mixtape section. Again, has songs to get you in the right mindset. So, you have Take On Me by Aha, Billie Jean by Michael Jackson, Karma Chameleon by The Culture Club, The Final Countdown by Europe, Jump, Van Halen, Girls Just Want to Have Fun, Cindy Lauper, We Built This City, Jefferson Starship. I loved that song back in the 80s. Take My Breath Away by Berlin, Rock You Like a, like a Hurricane, Scorpions, We're Not Gonna Take It, Twisted Sister. So I love these, these little asides. They get you really in the right mindset for this nostalgia effect of this 1980s that never was. Because, you know, these are things from the 1980s that was, but you're about to play in this bizarre alternate universe of the 1980s that never was. So next chapter is the kids. So this goes over, this is actual rules now. We're, we're dealing with attributes, skills, luck points, all the things that help you to understand how it is you're going to play the game. So uh, this uses a variation of the same system that they use for many of the other role-playing games with free league. So if you've played those, you'll be... Full, you know, you'll be ready to play this pretty quickly. The, the basic idea is, you know, you pick a skill that has to do with what you want to accomplish. The stat in that skill is how many dice you take. Then you, you check the linked attribute. The stat in that attribute is how many extra dice you take. And then maybe you have a piece of equipment that gives you a bonus. And then you take dice for that bonus. You roll that those dice. And you're looking for sixes. Sixes mean you succeed. If it's a really, really hard task, something that should be 
incredibly difficult or nearly impossible. You might need two or even three sixes to succeed. If you don't get the six, or in the case of the very difficult things, and when I'm talking about very difficult things, I mean like jumping off a bridge onto a moving car difficult. Uh, if you don't get enough sixes, you are able to push your luck and pick up all the dice that were not sixes and roll them again. But this will give you a negative status condition, which is kind of like taking injuries in this because you don't actually have hit points or injuries in this game. You can take status of conditions like being hurt or tired or hungry or scared, etc. Um, and that is the basics of how the system works. There are other things that can affect your roles. For instance, every character has a key item, a, a signature item that is unique to them that when, when being used in the appropriate time can add two dice to your roll. Uh, also, every character has a pride and they can once per session check their pride, actually check it off on their character sheet. And that will allow them to auto succeed if it's, if it's something where the pride would be relevant. And in addition, luck points, the younger you are, the more luck points you have. Luck points can be spent once per roll for a reroll without the danger of taking negative status effects. But each roll can only have one press your luck roll and one luck point roll. That's really... The, the entirety of how the system kind of works. So this goes all through that. Then we start talking about the actual difficulties and how you, you decide if you succeed, which I mostly just went over. Um, now, in regard to difficulties, the vast majority of roles are going to need one six and that's it. That's really all there is to it. Then we have a uh, explanation of how to aid other people in their roles which is if someone is aiding you generally they'll give you an extra die but then if you fail they will they will also possibly take the negative status effect that you would take um for failing now the the game is meant to be played that you are playing like 10 to 15 year old kids so the characters it's a little bit light more lighthearted. the characters actually cannot die they can become broken though broken either of mind or body and if you take four status ailments you will become broken and will automatically fail all your tests each of the status ailments gives you a negative one to all your tests when you get it and having multiple status ailments do stack so being both you know scared and tired will uh give you negative two to all your rolls so anyway <laughs> As the book goes on, we go through all the attributes, we go through all the skills, what you can use the skills for. If you get extra sixes beyond what you needed, what bonus effects you can apply to those skill rolls, that sort of thing, which is, which is a really cool thing. And that's really it. The entirety of the actual just basic gist of the rules that's in here is 32 pages. It's pretty quick to read. You're going to be through this in no time. Next, we have uh, the... Adventure, The Recycled Boy. Now, I'm not going to show anything from here because I don't want to ruin the adventure. Uh, suffice to say, this is a well-thought-out adventure with multiple major scenes, multiple areas to explore, lots of uh, mystery and clues to get. Very interesting storyline. Yeah, I like this adventure. And it's fairly concise. It's It comes in at a total of 16 pages. Now, I've got a little catalog for uh, for Free League Publishing, which, of course, has lots of their other products in here, Forbidden Lands and Alien, the role-playing game, and the various other things that they publish. And um, oh, where is it? There's a game. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, Crusader Kings. Big shout-out to Crusader Kings. I love that game. Okay, so the next thing is we've got some pre-gen characters. So we have five Count them five full color, two sided, pre generated character sheets. Now, the game is very simple, and you really only need one side for your stats. You have all your stats here. But on the other side, you have a picture of your character and a full, like, bio to help you understand what it's like to be this character. So, this is Maria or Kelly, depending on if you're playing in the United States or, um, or Sweden. I do think this was a bit funny because Maria is a name that could be in either. I don't know why they had to give her a different name for the U.S. But So her bio says, It's hard work being the center of attention for a whole school. But it's also rewarding to see the looks of admiration and jealousy as you move through the corridors. Still, it is nice to have some place where you can be yourself completely. Like the treehouse in your garden, where you and your sister and some of your friends hang out from time to time. But things have gotten complicated lately. 
Your boyfriend Frederick, tall, handsome, and popular, keeps going on about how much he loves you and that he wants to be with you forever. Neither he nor anyone else knows that you feel the same thing, but for another person. So obviously, her archetype is she's the popular girl. Now, the the different archetypes in here do almost feel like these characters are kind of out of out of the Breakfast Club, which I like that they gave the Breakfast Club as a uh, reference for this. So that is really cool. And I love these character sheets that, uh, one, they give you all the information you need in a nice one concise sheet. But two, I love the illustration of the bios on the back. These these are really great. I'm going to show you some more of the illustrations here because I think these are, they did a really, really great job on these. I'm going to show a couple more. There we go. Now, the final thing in the box we have here is a two-sided map. And this is this is actually really gorgeous. So on one side, we have the loop in Sweden, uh, up here in these islands in northern Sweden. There you go. And then on the other side, we have the American loop over here by Lake Mead in, uh, I believe it is in Boulder City or just outside of Boulder City, Nevada. So, but right near the borders of, border of Arizona there, it's not far from Arizona. So um, there you have it. And these maps are really nice. I like that they give you, uh, they give you a close-up map of the city, give you an idea of, of, of how, you know, where all the different major locations are from each other. This is just uh, a really nice thing to have out on the table so everybody can look at it, especially since this game is uh, very much a theater of the mind game, not the sort of game you use miniatures for. So you're not going to need the middle of the table for battle maps or anything like that in this game. In fact, battle is almost not a thing in this game. So, yeah, the rule system is very much all about solving mysteries. It's all about role-playing and solving mysteries. Uh, it's, it's fairly rules-light. In fact, it's even lighter rules than the already fairly rules-light of the general free league system. This is kind of a, a lighter version of that. Um, but that's really cool for what it's intended for. And what it's intended for is to promote role-playing and, and solving mysteries. And that's, that's really, really awesome. Yeah. FYI, if you haven't checked out the TV show they made on this, I would highly recommend checking out the show. It's on Amazon Prime, and it, it gives you a really good feel for the kind of universe you'll be playing in. You, you're playing out one of the mysteries in one of those episodes, except that you are a close-knit group of kids who are going about trying to solve said mystery, whereas the kids in the show are a little less... Um, a little less active in actually going out and trying to solve things uh, and don't actually work together often as, as much as you would in this game. So you can think of this game as being a cross between the show based on the original book that this is also based on and Stranger Things, if you will. So uh, to give you a kind of feel for the theme of how this plays. Now, the system is really good. Really good for being a, a light, rules light system that again, encourages role play and encourages investigation. And that is really cool. It's really well done. I think it's it's a very well done system, especially for an introductory system. This, this is an introductory box for an introductory system. And that is great. This is a great game that you can get um, kids in on to teach them and it'll be very usable. Or you can make it more adult and play with adults, even though you're playing as kids, to explore more adult themes um, because there definitely can be much more adult themes in this uh, and and that is awesome too now the box set itself there's there's some major things I have to go over in regard to you know why I will be recommending this box set if you want to check out Tales from the Loop so the first the first thing I want to talk about is value so when I first saw the box set and I felt it I got to confess I was a little worried about the value because it was it, all the components together were pretty light. And then, but then I thought, I'm like, well, how much are they going to be selling this for? So I looked it up online and it's only going for like, well, it's, it's up for pre order at the time of the recording of this, but it will be going for uh, $25.57 US. So for 25 and change, this is an amazing amount of value. Um, I, I was thinking originally that it was a bit light, but once I saw the price, I was like, no, that's that's great. There's plenty of stuff in here for 25 bucks and change. Now, the next thing is with this box by itself, let's say all you get is this box and you never get the main set. 
What do you get for your 25 and change? What can you do with this box? Well, there is a one-off, a little one-off game in here that you can run for a group, or you can run again for another group, or again for another group. I mean, um, this is not, of course, a one and done, you can you throw it away. Or you could run it, you know, once for a group, and then based on the adventure in here, you could very easily come up with your own mysteries and run those again as one-offs. Now, what you can't do is level up, and what you can't do is you can't make your own characters. You're gonna have to keep using the pre-gen characters that come in here. So in regard to that, there is a limit to the to how much you're going to use this, but it, I mean, it's not really intended to be the sort of end-all be-all. It's, it's really intended to give you a taste of the game and then decide if from here you want to expand on to the main game and buy the full rule book. So then the next question is, how much are you going to keep using the materials in this box and what materials are you going to keep using once you move on to the full rules, the full book and start making your own characters? So first things, the dice. You're going to keep using these. These are really nice. You have them. They're custom dice with the symbol of the loop on them. Once you have these, you're going to put them out in the middle of the table for everybody to use and they will be something that you're always going to use. Next thing. Uh, the Recycle Boy. This is not going to get used once you play it, uh, unless you want to introduce people to the universe again. Um, maybe you use it for a second group once you have the full rules as a starting adventure to then level up from. Maybe you could use it again then, but otherwise this is probably going to sit in the box and not get used. The next thing, the maps. This is, this is so awesome and so cool, and since you don't need that space in the middle of the table for a battle map for this game, because there's really not much combat to speak of you can have a fight but it doesn't feel like you know i attack and see how much damage i do it, it's it's much more abstract than that and and you cause conditions rather than causing wounds so in the middle of the table putting this map out all the time just so people can have a look and and, and understand where everything is in relation to each other is really awesome so this is something i think you will keep using on and on and on now the pre-generated characters um these might be good for inspiration for for uh making more characters or quick using for npcs so in that regard these may get used i um they're not going to have as much utilage as say the dice or the map but they definitely have more of a chance of being used as quick grab an npc when your players do something you didn't think of and you need another npc then say the actual adventure will be reused once you've played that adventure. And the final thing is the little rule book. Now, this might surprise you, but I think you're gonna use this actually a lot. And the reason I say that is this has a really nice quick reference to all the sorts of things you can do when you get more than one six while doing a skill roll. They have all the sorts of great bonus effects in here as a quick reference that you can use. So you can keep your big hardcover Tales from the Loop rule book by you. And you can give this out to the players for them to pass around and be looking at it. And when they do a roll, go, oh, wait, can I, um, let's see, I, I, I got extra, I got extra points in my tinker roll. Um, I want to make the thing I'm tinkering with uh, more durable, you know, and they can look at that and figure out what they want to do and that's really really cool so overall overall this box is really good uh number one like i already covered amazing value for 25 bucks and change you get a lot in this box and the books are very unintimidating this is a great ex they have a great explanation here on how to role play how to game master um this would be a very decent place to be a starting point, not just for the Tales from the Loop role-playing game, but for role-playing in general. Like, this is a great place if you want to try out and see if you and your friends are into role-playing. This box is a great place to do that, if, if, if you know, to try out your first role-playing game. Uh, in addition, if you want to see if you are interested in the Tales from the Loop system and don't want to buy, you know, the big, more expensive hardcover book, 25 bucks and change is... is very affordable to just pick this up, play a one-off game with some friends and see if you like it and then be like, would you guys want to play a campaign of this? And it would really help you decide. And that's that's really pretty freaking awesome. On top of that, the rules itself actually, um, this, in my opinion, is 
one of the cooler and more interesting implementations of Free League's game system in one of the role-playing games. Um, I really like the way they did it. I like the simplified version since you're playing kids and this is meant to go much more smoothly and be less combat-oriented. I like how they simplified it down and boiled it down to its, its essential elements for this game. And I, I have not bought the full game yet but just from what's presented in this box set i think it's really cool i really like it and i could totally see myself running a long-term campaign in this universe so yeah i really like the tales from the loop starter set i think it's 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 really great for a lot of different reasons and it hits on a lot of different levels like i have already talked about so where am i at with this i'm gonna give the tales from the loop starter box set nine out of ten stars because like i said it's an amazingly affordable way to be an entryway either into checking out tales from the loop or checking out role playing in general plus there's tons of stuff that if you move on to the full rules that you're going to want to keep using and keep having out on the table um that those things actually kind of make it worthwhile on its own plus the adventure that's in here is a really, and that's that was a big deciding factor. The adventure that comes in this box is a really well thought out, well structured, awesome adventure and great introduction to the universe of Tales from the Loop. So there you have it. I mean, I really, I really recommend this one. Um, give me a comment down below if you've played Tales from the Loop, what you think of it. Um, let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this review of the starter box set for Tales from the Loop, and you'd like to see me review more role-playing game products like this in the future, be sure to give this video a like, share it on all forms of social media. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Board Game Captain. That's Captain spelled with a K on YouTube. And until next time, game on.